all right guys welcome to the last chapter of this course so in this chapter we are going to do the render setup for the final render and add some render elements and render this image the final image and then take it to photoshop for post production purpose and then we are going to save it as a final image at the end so let's just start and see how the basic render looks like so we have your width and height as 1200 let's just render with we are not going to change anything over here as well as we are just going to add ambient occlusion here in the radius i'm going to place let's say 0.3 meters an occlusion like 0.2 meters 0.2 as units for the test we are, i'm not going to change this also in the settings no changes in the render elements i'm going to add the render elements just to be sure that they are coming correct so we are going to add the denoiser the default filter diffuse filter sorry and then vd reflection vd refraction vd specular vd total lighting wire color vd shadows VDA matte shadow and VDA ambient occlusion and click OK. okay. Now let's just go ahead and render this and see how this looks and then we will render the high resolution image after this. Okay, the render is done now. Let's just see our passes. So we have alpha pass, ambient occlusion pass. As you can see, a little bit noise over here. There's a lot of noise in this ambient occlusion pass. This is a denoiser which we will be using, which we will be using as a base layer in the Photoshop. Diffuse filter is just the color. Is matte shadows we may use it because but as you can see there is a lot of noise then we have a reflection pass and we have a refraction pass shadow again specular total lighting wire color we can use this pass for selecting objects now all this comes here and final result this is the final result everything looks fine i think we have to render this but before i want to add one more pass we need to find this because that is not a total lighting pass v-ray lighting pass okay we're going to add this or maybe a raw lighting pass V-ray raw, raw lighting. So let's add this and we will render the final image as per the resolution that we have. So let's just go and find the resolution inside the images, the image. Okay. So our resolution was File info 5080388 let's just put here 
pi 0 8 0 no what was it pi 8 0 8 so pi 8 0 8 382 okay this is our resolution now inside the gi samples i'm not going to change much here also but inside the gi i'm going to they're going to keep everything else like this only so let's render this image at this resolution and then we will save this inside our folder renders folder and then we will take the passes inside photoshop and edit it inside the photoshop so i'm going to render this image right now and then i will pause the video and get back to you once the video once the render is finished all right guys the render is done and you can see that this render took around 1 hour 39 minutes on my computer here also you can see the render time 1 hour 39 minutes so let's just check how it is looking right now looks pretty good okay everything looks good let's go ahead and check the passes so we have this alpha ambient occlusion denoiser which we are going to use diffuse filter is fine reflection refraction specular wire color raw lighting let's see and we have effect results now let's go ahead and save this images i'm going to use save all image channels in separate files let's create a go into the renders and i'm going to paste let's just say vs camera and virtual staging course underscore I'm going to say as target files okay press okay so here we have renders and inside that you can see we have passes getting saved Now we have saved all the passes over here. Now let's go ahead and take them in Photoshop. I'm gonna copy the address. Start Photoshop. here i'm going to go ahead and say script load in the stack browse go to the folder select all and then press ok once you have all the files in the stack press ok
so now you can see all the images are stacked in layers all the passes channels are stacked in the layer this is our main layer which is effect result we are going to use this as primary or the base so let's just turn off everything else okay now this is our main image now we are going to use uh, the background image as well so let's go and bring that background image as well inside the images this is our background image let's drag this inside photoshop so we have this background image and we will drag it inside our image so as you can see this is the this is the image without the furniture and this is the layer that goes on the top of the furniture layer okay now we will go into the channels as you can see we have a alpha channel now let's just copy this layer control c control v now we have two layers i'm going to rename this as this as shadow layer i'm going to first rename this as background layer background a c k and this as a shadow this will be our furniture okay so as you can see and this is also background so in the furniture layer i'm going to go to channel and select control click on the alpha and mask it now as you can see we have a layer and we have a furniture layer okay so as you can see if i zoom in we do not have any shadows over here or anywhere in the image okay so the reason is this that this layer once i once i turn this on layer on we get the shadows and the furniture layer separate this gives us a little bit of control us a little bit of control actually to manipulate or adjust the shadows that we want so that's why we keep this layer separate so once we have this i'm going to add a mask to it and press alt backspace which will give me a black mask that means there is no shadow happening and i can actually paint with white so that i get the shadows where i want and the kind of shadows that i want okay so as you can see i can actually paint the shadows the way i want it here also but as you can see as a, as in how i paint it here also I get control of how and where and how much the shadow that we want and if you don't want the shadows that are not necessary or required we can reduce it 
or remove it in other words so if i don't want the shadows over here i can just remove the shadows which gives me a lot of control on my shadows as well okay and i'm going to put this image or the background the shadow layer inside the color or luminosity by normal and luminosity the reason why we do it luminosity is as you can see if, if i if i put it as a normal you can see it as a gray you can see it as a gray you can see it as a gray but when i put it on a luminosity it takes the color of the background image so here also you can see and i click this and say normal and when i change it to luminosity it will start to take the color of the wall a little bit so it looks very natural that we have this color as a shadow color here also if you can see if i turn it to let's say normal we have a gray color in shadows but when i turn it to luminosity it will actually take the color of the wall that is the off white cream color of the wall in such a shadows as well so that's how so we get a lot of control when we start to use it like this inside the shadow so let's do it like this so once we have the furniture layer on top of the shadows layer let's just uh, enhance it overall and if we want we can just paint it in a way that or remove some of the shadows that are necess unnecessary okay so let's just So we only need the shadows that are closer to the furniture and we don't want the extra shadows that is coming on the walls or on the floor that is already there in the scene because of the render. So by removing that shadows we make the shadows a little bit tighter and only to the scene. So we have the shadows, we have the furniture, now let's just enhance the overall feel to it. So I'm going to copy this furniture layer again and let's just say brightness and I'm going to add this to a screen so once I add this to a screen I you can see the furniture becomes more bright now I can reduce the fill and see how much bright we want let's just say 20 and again I'm going to just copy this and put this in a soft light and increase the fill too so as you can see once I increase the fill or 100 it creates a lot of contrast so which actually pops the colors that are in the furniture a little bit more so we have to be very careful of how this looks like and you can see previously yes without this soft light and screen this image looks even if I focus on the furniture over here once I start 
see how dull and how contrast it, it creates. Okay, so this actually enhances the overall furniture look and feel, which is very important. It actually makes the furniture stand out from the background image also. So now we are going to go and take the reflection pass and drag it on the top of it. Press on. And here I'm going to again use screen. Screen. As you can see, once we put in screen, we get a lot of reflection happening, which we are going to adjust again, let's say 20. So maybe 30. Now we can see a little bit of reflection lightens it up a little bit. And we can also use a specular in the same way. So we add the specular, say screen again. So if you if you if you zoom out, zoom in into the uh, bench, you can see how this specular affects the bench. A lot of highlights happening over here, which is actually good. It also adds a lot of definition to our. You can especially see it over here in the bench, which which is not closer to the door here. Once we on the, you can see how this specularity gives more depth to our bench over here. So that is one thing. And after that, we are going to use diffuse filter because I'm going to use diffuse filter here and we are going to say color. So, and also we are going to mask this as there as well. So, as you can see, I don't think we need to use this. Okay. Sorry, we are going to use a, a channel. We're going to use use this did I paint on furniture okay so we are going to use this as a mask and yes I guess so so once once you use the mask in the diffuse filter it what diffuse filter is is the actual color of the furniture that was there before rendering and there is something wrong it, it just turns off the color blue color of this and takes it away so we are not going to use this because it's not working as per our requirement so this is what we have maybe we have matte shadows raw lighting and let's just try something with raw lighting if we need let's see if this also comes again in, inside the shadow layer if i add this you get a you can add it into multiply and we have this shadow layer but i don't think this also works for us so no so i'm just going to put all this other passes inside a folder called other elements and if we need them we can use them but for now I don't think so we need any other passes and everything looks good so this is a background image this is the furniture image and you can see the difference 
from no empty space to after adding furniture so let's just save this image as final i'm going to save the psd as copy first inside vs course and save it as a psd and then i'm going to save this as a jpg file as well okay there we are and let's just copy this copy this image and put it over here and inside the render we just copy this and keep it outside inside the virtual staging course and I'm going to save virtual staging OG and this is our OG image and this is our image that we created so as you can see it's very difficult to, it's kind of difficult to say if it's a 3d image with elements added into it even though yes it's it's 3d and it looks sharp and crisp and but yes uh, it's very close to real real life photograph looks like real life photograph and for a novice, for someone who is who does not have knowledge of 3D, cannot tell whether it's a CGI or a real photo. And that is what our goal should be. And this is mainly because of, not because of the furniture and material. Yes, obviously, when you start to use the material and furniture with the real scale, and mainly because you match the lighting of the background image with the artificial lights that we use inside V-Ray this light, this light and the light that coming from outside in a way that it actually makes it look more more realistic and the reflection and the light that's coming that actually matches with the furniture, the CG furniture that you are putting and it actually makes it look like okay this is the this area is affecting from the light and the, the shadows that are coming over here are because of the light from here and here and the shadows that are coming now you can see there are two shadows happening over here as well one shadow is sharp and one shadow is soft that is because one light creates the sharper shadows well as the other light is creating softer shadows same as in the real image we have a sharp shadow here and then we have a softer shadow here because of the two light sources same thing happens over here because we have one sharp shadow and then another with a softer shadow because of the two lights happening so this you have to keep in mind we have to mimic the lighting that is already there inside the scene otherwise it will not it will look fake and it will not look very realistic very realistic and and it will also look like there's something wrong there's something off about this image the way it is lit or something so this is something that you have to keep in mind while you are lighting the image and also you need to keep in mind the color scheme the placement the position and the overall scale of the furniture that you are using to make the image look correct if the if anything is is off disproportionate it will it will be noticed very easily by the people or someone who is observing the image because it's very natural that something is not correct or not looking right to figure it out so please get keep, please keep all these things in mind keep keep the things in proportion light the scene as per the background image or at least try to bring it as close as possible so that everything looks correct and good and make your client very happy with that so that is all for this chapter we have this is i guess this is the last chapter 
and i hope you have learned throughout this course how to do virtual staging and all the information that i have provided you has been helpful to you so that you can work on your implement that information inside your projects and use them uh, as a tool to make your images look good and beautiful and put it on, on, on your profiles and make your clients happy. Thank you very much for joining and being patient with me throughout this course. You have a good day. All right, guys, we have come to the end of this course. I hope you have enjoyed this course and learned a lot from this. Whatever you have learned, please use it inside your projects and keep practicing it so that you can become a better artist. You have a good day.